Hello, welcome back to Andy's Amateur Adventures. I am going to show you how to install an aftermarket wireless phone charger under the dashboard of your Ford Maverick. I say under the dashboard, really it's under that, uh, that orange storage area that's below your dashboard. So my first steps was to access the fuse panel and to access underneath that little uh, dash storage area. And what I did is I got a, a 12 volt fuse, uh, a, a 12 volt powered USB adapter to, to power it. And then I got a under desk uh, wireless charger that was powered via USB. So that my first step what is going to be running the power to the power adapter that way I'll have an extra USB and I'm not going to use the one that's up on the dash and I'll keep that that free. So I'm now working in the fuse box. Let me bring up a fuse diagram. On the fuse diagram, number three and number six are the fuses that turn on and off with your truck. I want this uh, wireless charger to turn on, on and off with my truck because I don't want a constant draw on the battery. And you, you can see me in the background verifying what uh, what fuses turn on and off with the truck and also which side the uh, power comes in for the fuse. Uh, if you were paying attention earlier, you saw that my that I already have a, a fuse tap going to fuse number three and number six was hard to tap into, but I actually used that in one of my previous videos to tap in my subwoofer. And what I did to correct that, to put two things to in or to put three things into two fuses is I got a do a dual fuel fuse tap which I installed about two weeks after doing this video so in this video you'll see me doing a little bit wonky stuff to get three things into those two fuses but I, I did go back and correct it afterwards coming back and slowing down the video uh, the next thing I did was find the ground there, there are some bolts below the fuse box, but they run into plastic and they're not good grounds. The bolt you see me working on right now is run into metal, which runs to the frame. It is a good ground, so that is the one that I used in order to power that, that USB power adapter. And after I got that bolt off, I just connected the, uh, the ground and then I uh, pleased up the wires and hid them behind some stuff and then I went over to the driver's side and removed the trim panel there. Now the trim piece on the driver's side it is held on with a seven millimeter bolt screw so you're gonna need to, to get a socket and socket wrench and take that off. Now on the passenger side the trim piece is just pulled off but on the driver's side it's actually held, held on securely. Once I removed the driver's side lower trim panel, what I did is I took the power cable that's going to power the wireless power supply and I fed that back to the USB power adapter that just installed on the other side. After I fed that through, plugged it in, and then I took the, uh, the wireless charger and I held it on the bottom of the, uh, of the uh, storage area and I put my phone inside the storage area and I set it and, and that let me determine where I needed to place the wireless charger. Once I get the charger lined up, then I just took some uh, Gorilla double-sided tape and I initially put it around the perimeter of the wireless charger thinking that the Gorilla tape might block the signal and then I stuck it, stuck it on there and and it worked fine for about two weeks. Unfortunately, it fell down internally. So what I did, I just took one big piece of double-sided Gorilla tape and stuck it back where it was, and the phone was able to charge through the dash and through that Gorilla tape without any issue. After I got that wireless charger uh, mounted correctly underneath 
the uh, that storage area. Then I went and I put the adapter or the USB adapter where it was going to, to be. It just it, initially I was going to put some double side tape on it and actually mount it in, but it, it was so tight up in there that it didn't really work and it's curved inside there where it's placed instead of flat. So it's just sitting there a little bit loose, but I actually haven't noticed it driving. There's been no vibration. Once I put everything, once I put it away, I uh, cleaned up all the wires, put everything where it was going to be, and then I put all the trim pieces back. And then I sit, finally I uh, bolted the driver's side trim piece back where it's going to be and put the fuse box trim panel back wh where it goes. And that com completed the project. The total cost for the project was about 500, well, I'm sorry, was about $50. If you go to the Ford website and you look for the official part, it costs about $550. So that is a significant difference. The time to completion was just under 35 minutes. And that was with me figuring out which fuse did what in my fuse box. So you could probably get this down to about 10 or 15 minutes. It's a very simple installation. I am uploading an unedited version of this install. If you have any questions about anything I did while I was fast forwarding, you can look and see exactly what, what I did. It's completely raw, unedited, so you can get a good feeling of how difficult this process is if you have any, any doubts. And that's all I have for you guys today. You all have a great day. I hope you find this video informative and it helps you out with whatever you need to do.